All right, so we've learned how to see the basic shapes in our first video, so let's get started with our chickadee. You can see here that we have the ovals for the body and the head. I want you to notice this line that I've drawn. You don't have to do that. We'll learn about that in a later lesson. But I like to draw the angle of that oval for the body so that I can tell which direction it needs to go to match the photograph. So I want you to spend a few minutes on this. You do not have to get this perfect, right? This is our sketch, this is our safe place. But it is important that you get the beginning of your drawing the way you want it to be. I am gonna want you to pause the video until you get this to where you want it to be. I don't want you to erase over and over and over because as we go through our sketch, we are going to improve the things that we've already done when we get more information. Once you get these things in place, I want to teach you one of my favorite tricks and we're going to use this on all the birds that we draw. If I draw a line between the top and the bottom beak and I just continue it straight out the back of this chickadee's head, look what sits right on top of it. The eye. So this is a super cool trick because this helps us know where to put the eye and the beak in relationship to one another. Another cool thing about this, if this line is pointing up, we can tell that the bird has its head tilted up. If it's pointed down, like ours today, it's slightly down, we can tell that the bird has its head tilted slightly down. So this is helpful to us in a few different ways, and it's a really, really cool trick. You don't have to draw your line all the way through the back of your head. You don't even have to draw it on your reference photo. You can just imagine it, but just add that little line, put the beak around it, and then you know where you need to put the eye in relationship to it. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna start at that point of the shoulder where the wing meets the body, and we want to start our curvy V shape for the wing. You can kind of follow the line of your oval, but use your eyes. Ask yourself, do I need to move anything yet? You'll notice that I've erased multiple times to get this in the right place. Do your best right now and as we go along, you'll be able to change it and adjust it as you need to. All right, let's take a look at the tail. I would call this maybe an oval. You could use a rectangle if you wanted to make sharper edges and then come back later and kind of round them out. The tail comes out near the tip of the wing. The more information that we start to get into our sketch, the more we will be able to see if we have things in the right place, if we have things the right size. Remember when we talked about how you'll find a triangle where the tail and the body meet? We kind of see that here, so we need to connect the tail and the body. We're getting really close already to being done with our sketch. So the next thing we're going to need to do is we need to give our chickadee something to stand on because it's not flying, but it's not floating. So we have to give it something to perch on and something to draw our feet on. I have students who will add leaves, flowers. They get really creative about what they draw their birds sitting on. So you can choose today. Do you want to draw this branch as you see it like I am, or do you want to draw it some other way? Now what we need to do is we need to get our legs and our feet in place. Remember that when we get to the feet, we're going to try to simplify it as much as we can, and we're not going to spend a lot of time trying to get those feet really, really accurate. And it's not because they're not important but it's because they're complicated. And every time you look at a bird, you're going to see a different shape. For today, we're gonna to think about it like simple shapes that have lights and darks in them. So you can see here that I've just kind of tried to follow the shape of the outline and I've not gotten really specific. Later when we go into shade, we can add a little bit of shading that's gonna help make that shape look even more accurate, but just do your best right now. I want to congratulate you because at this point you have gotten through your basic map sketch and we are about to be ready to move on to the second part of the drawing, the artistic part, the fun part, however you want to think about it. We're going to do the shading, the details. So the first thing that we have to look at is the outline because we use two ovals to draw our bird. But what happens is it starts to remind me of something. Does it remind you of anything? A snowman. So sometimes I call this the snowman bird. We don't want a snowman bird. If we look at this photo of the chickadee and I outline the shape of a snowman, we can see very clearly that's not the shape of the chickadee in the photo. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to come in and we need to fix our outline. 
Now I've been drawing in blue and I'm going to switch over to my black pencil just so that you can see the difference in the two parts of our drawing so that you can know that the blue is the sketch and when we move to black, that's moving on to the second part of our drawing. We can take a look here and let's outline the shape that we see on our chickadee in the photo. We need to connect these two circles and get rid of that snowman shape. So what we can do is we come right out under the beak. Notice that it's a little bit of a flat line that sticks out and meets with the chest feathers. Then we can go over the top of the head and come down and bring those two shapes together. And I want you to notice, just because I drew an oval does not mean that I have to follow that oval. As I'm going through this part of the process, I can see that I did not make the head oval large enough. So instead of just tracing around it, I ignore that and I look at the photo and I draw what I can see needs to be drawn. While you're working on this, I'm going to work to catch up with you. I'm going to go over the lines that I've already drawn in my black pencil so that I can be at the stage that you're at. Right now, we're just at the very beginning stages of the second part of our drawing and we're kind of just perfecting our sketch outline before we move on to any sort of shading or details. Now that you have your outline in place, you can actually go in and you can erase some of those lines that we drew before, right? Because we don't need those ovals anymore. We don't wanna fall in love with our sketch because our sketch is just there to get us started. So you can come in and you can erase those circles and any of those extra shape lines that we no longer need and what's gonna happen is suddenly your chickadee's gonna start looking a lot more like the chickadee in the photo. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to turn this blue layer way, way down so that you can still barely see it, but it's not distracting. And the reason that I want to do this is because I want you to be able to see the sketch and the second part of the drawing. So I'm going to leave mine there so that at the end of the drawing, you can kind of see where we started and where we ended. But you can just go ahead and erase those lines. But I want you to notice that I erase and redraw a lot of lines. From the beginning of our drawing to the end of our drawing, throughout the whole thing, you will see me erase and try again. Erase and move a line. Erase and change a line. Now that we have to think about shading and details, and when you go in to do your own drawing, you don't have to start with one or the other, but we're doing a class and we have to do it together today. We're learning. So I'm going to show you how I like to start with my shading. The first thing we have to do is we have to find the lightest lights and the darkest darks. What that allows us to do is then come in and find the shades of gray that are really light, but they're not as light as the white. And the shades that are pretty dark, but they're not as dark as our black or our darkest areas. That gives us what we call a range. Now, if we want to draw our lightest lights, the whitest parts of our drawing, what do we do? We don't do anything, right? Because you can't get whiter than the white of the paper. The trick that I'm going to show you next is one of my absolute favorite tricks, okay? We're going to do this every bird that we draw. There are birds that this does not work for, but you can use this when you draw other animals, even when you draw people. The first place that I like to start is I like to go into the eye and I shade it in, but rather than shading it in completely, I leave a little shape of white, maybe a circle, maybe just a rectangular shape but somewhere in there I leave a bit of a white spot. Why do I do this? I do that because an eyeball is a sphere, it's a ball shape, and if a sphere gets wet and light hits it, there's going to be a reflection that comes off of it. And so we know that these little chickadee's eyeballs are round, and what's gonna happen is that that light's gonna hit it and it's gonna send back a reflection, and that's what that white spot is. And that instantly makes our drawing begin to look more realistic, right? A photograph doesn't have to do any work to look realistic because it is real. But when we are drawing, we're using flat shapes to try to make something that looks like it's coming off the page. We can use little tricks like this because we're using the way the brain works. And we'll get into that more in another lesson. It's really exciting and it's really cool. And it's one of the best ways that you can start thinking like an artist. So let's take a look at our darkest darks first. I want you to squint your eyes at this photograph of the chickadee. Are there any areas on this that you could fill in with the darkest dark that your pencil can get? Let's find those areas. The most obvious area we see is that black cap on this black cap chickadee. 
let's go in and gently sketch. I want you to go around the eye. I want you to give a little bit of space between the eye and the shape, even though we really don't see that in the image. And we can go back later and sort of blend those two together. But right now, just so we don't lose our eye in this dark black cap, let's draw a line. And then draw this triangular shape that comes out from under the beak. And let's start to shade this in. As we move to the area at the top of the chickadee's head, I want to point something out that's really important. Remember when we talked about drawing what you see? As artists, sometimes we have to turn our brain off and draw what we see in front of us, not what our brain knows is there. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look. Our brain knows that these feathers are black feathers. So what it wants you to do is come in and just shade it in solid black because they're black. But if I come over here and I select the shades that are actually in this image, what you'll notice is that as it goes up toward the top and as the sun hits the top of that chickadee's head, even though those feathers are black, they don't look black, do they? That's not black, is it? Look at how different the bottom of that black cap is from the top. Because when light hits those feathers, it's going to make them lighter. So we really don't need to use our blackest black or our darkest dark. We really need to use a little bit. It's still really dark, but it's just not quite as dark as filling it in solid. So as you get toward the top of your chickadee's head, try to leave a little bit of that gray so it looks like the sunlight is hitting the top of it. We can continue by filling in some of these other really dark areas that we see. We have a really dark shadow on the legs, on this back foot especially, and since I'm not gonna put a lot of detail, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in solid. And the front leg, it's not quite as dark as the back leg, so maybe I won't go all the way to black. But the branch is dark. There's a little wing peeking out from behind that's really, really dark. So go ahead and add all of these easy areas. We do this because we can get these out of the way, and it gives us a nice range to start to be able to see those grays right? Because now we need to look for those grays that are not as dark as the darkest areas, but they're really dark. And maybe some of those grays that are so light that they are really close to white, but they're not white. So we have to give them a little bit of shading. Anytime that we're going to draw or we're trying to fill in detail on something that's complicated like a bird's wing, the best thing that we can do is we can take something that's a big complicated shape and just like our basic sketch, we can start to make it simpler by breaking it down into smaller shapes. So on the wing area, what we can do is we can squint our eyes again and start breaking that wing down into basic shapes. We can start dividing this wing into smaller sections and then instead of having to look at it and our brain process that whole complicated wing, we can start to process smaller sections. But rather than coming in and drawing each feather, I'm gonna squint my eyes and I'm gonna start once again. Here's this really dark section of wing. I'm gonna make it really dark up toward the top where when I squint my eyes, it looks almost just like a black shape. And then as it goes toward the bottom, it becomes a gray, a dark gray. It's still really dark, but it's not as dark as that top section of that wing. Then I can come in and focus on the areas that are just slightly lighter than our darkest area. What you'll be amazed to find is that when you treat the wing this way, when you step back from it, it still looks as though you've put a lot of detail in the wing when really you haven't. We've given our brain enough information to understand what it's seeing. You will find in each of our guided drawings that there are a few places that we're going to find shadow or shading on any of our birds. And that's because there are certain things that we can count on. For instance, we know that there is going to be sunlight. There's going to be light coming from somewhere, right? Because if there wasn't, we wouldn't be able to see this bird and we wouldn't be drawing it. So there is going to be some kind of light. And that means that on the opposite side, there's going to be some kind of shadow. So on most of our birds, the light comes from the sun. So it's going to be coming at an angle from above. And that means that below, on the bottom of the chest, on the bottom of the belly, at the legs, under the wing, under the tail, those areas are almost always going to have some amount of shading on them. So for instance, even though we know that the chest and the belly are made up of really, really light feathers, even though we know those are really light, because the bottom part of it is in shadow, they actually become a fairly dark gray. 
So we need to add some shading to this area of the belly to start to make it look like it's in shadow. That's part of what's gonna make our bird look convincingly realistic. Remember when we talked about the different ways that we can shade? I want you to think about that in the different areas that we're shading right now. In the wing, we can use the tip of our pencil a little bit more because these are small areas that we're filling in. But on the bottom of the belly where we're shading in that shadow, Maybe it's an area where you turn your pencil to the side and then you try to blend it up toward that really light area, smudging it with your finger. So you can play around and you can do what feels right to you. You're the artist. You get to look at the photo and say, what do I see? What do I want to include? What do I not want to include? You'll remember in our draw what you see, not what you know lesson that we know that this bird is covered in feathers. And our brain wants us to then draw feathers. It, it says, okay, the bird is covered in feathers. I'm going to just start drawing feathers all over it. But we've already found out that that's not really what we see. Remember that we see the shadows of the feathers on top that are being cast on the feathers on the bottom. As we finish up, as we add details and shading to our bird, I want you to look and find the areas where you see feathers. And any area that you see is feathery, I want you to include some of those little hash marks, the little squiggle marks, their V shapes, M shapes, W shapes, however you wanna think of them. Find some areas to add a few of those in and see if it starts to make your chickadee look a little bit more feathery. All right. We made it through our chickadee drawing. I hope that you learned a lot and that you were able to follow along and I hope that you feel good about it. I want you to remember to do your self-assessment. I want you to critique yourself, not just on your drawing, but maybe on the process. And then remember to post that in the classroom and comment on other people's critiques. But of course, I want you to be kind. I want you to be encouraging. Don't forget to post your prompt in the classroom discussion as well. I'll see you guys next week.